Hey everyone, what's going on? It is Zach, and I think I have the sauce for the seven star Inteleon raids. If you guys enjoy this content, do not forget to like and subscribe, and let's jump into it. So I went through and found all of the usable moves. You know, I didn't put in water gun or anything like that. I didn't put in any status moves uh, and just took count on what damage they would do. Now, I don't differentiate whether they are physical or special, but I do on the calcs so when you look at this damage it does factor in you know it, it's put into a damage calculator so acrobatics for example besides pikachu none of the seven star raids have had an item so i think it like you have to factor in acrobatics as 110 because it doesn't have an item but here you'll see a list of all of Inteleon's moves, Snipe Shot, Acrobatics, Water Pulse, Sucker Punch, U-Turn, Liquidation, Hydro Pump, Chilling Water, uh, Swift, Icy Wind, Mud Shot, Air Cutter, Air Slash, Waterfall, Dark Pulse, Shadow Ball, Surf, Ice Beam, Blizzard, Water Pledge, Giga Impact, Hydro Cannon, Hyper Beam, Terror Blast, Ice Shard, Aqua Jet, and Fell Stinger. Uh, I don't think we'll see a lot of physical moves but then again typhlosion was a mixed attacker so you never you never know what i do think we're gonna see and i'll highlight them in green i think we're gonna see snipe shot i think we're going to see air cutter now air cutter i'm a little iffy on the reason why i think we'll see air cutter and not air slash even though air slash is higher here with uh base 75 power is that air slash has a chance to flinch but air cutter has an increased chance to crit now if you haven't looked into it already inteleon has the ability let's go back to it here inteleon does have the ability sniper which if this pokemon strikes with a critical hit the damage is multiplied by 1.5 uh, so it has increased damage when it's critting. So you have to take advantage of that. Inteleon only really has two moves that crit at a high rate. That's air cutter with a, it just says a high crit chance ratio. I believe it's a 20% crit chance. And then snipe shot uh, also has a high hit, hit critical hit chance ratio, which I also think is probably like 20%. So I think these are going to be its main two moves and not Ice Beam. Blizzard. We'll talk about that later. But back to the doc. I think we're going to see either Air Slash or Air Cutter. I'm going to highlight both of them because you could have one of them as a secondary move. But I think we'll see Blizzard. Maybe Ice Beam as a secondary move, but a, a lot of these, besides Charizard, hasn't had a lot of secondary moves. Charizard was the only one with four. Actually, I think it had five in all honesty. Um, and then the next one up is Pikachu with uh, two support moves and one additional attacking move. And then Decidueye with two support moves and one additional attacking move uh, other than the regular four. So Snipeshot air cutter air slash blizzard and dark pulse so the reason why i say dark pulse over something like ice beam and blizzard is because every single one of these seven star raids have had four different type moves as their set moves if you look at all of them you look at charizard you look at cinderace you look at all of them they all have one move of a different type when you capture it so i think we'll see snipe shot air cutter Dark Pulse, and then Blizzard. Those are going to be the four moves when you catch it, capture it. Now, Decidueye had Air Cutter, but we have seen them reuse moves one time. Both uh, Typhlosion and Charizard had Sunny Day, so it's not out of the realm. And that's about it. We haven't seen any recharge moves, so I don't think we're going to see any like Giga Impact. Hydro Cannon, Hyper Beam. I don't think we're going to see anything like that because they haven't had a rechar recharge turn yet. But let's jump into it. I will have a copy of this down in the description. We'll, I'll have the file so you can make a copy. You can look at my uh, my calcs that I did. I, I put a lot of work into this, so I spent my lunch. So I hope you appreciate it. But on to the team builder. I think... 
yeah, Air Cutter, Snipe Shot, Blizzard, Dark Pulse. These are going to be the moves we're going to see. It's probably going to, I calc everything at a modest nature. And I think for the secondary moves, we're, we'll see Snowscape. Snowscape 1, it's a nice type. So it gets a boost from the snow being up. It's going to get a defense boost. So that's going to be really good for Inteleon because Inteleon's uh, base defense is not the great. It's base defenses in general are not the greatest. We might see Air Slash uh, just because I think, you know, it flips in between. Or we could see Ice Beam. We've seen Greninja with double team. We haven't seen them really... Like I said, except for Sunny Day, we haven't really seen them reuse moves. So I think we'll more see agility here, where I think Inteleon's going to boost its speed, make sure it's the fastest thing on the field, and it is going to try to crit hard, hit hard. Now, how do we stop crits? We've already talked about this in the previous video, and that is between one of two abilities. And there's a third one in here, but Shell Armor and Battle Armor. Both of these abilities means that the Pokemon cannot be struck by crits. So let's get into what Mons I think can take advantage of this the best and what I think is going to be the best for possible soloing. First time I've ever done a solo one, but let's look into it. Samurott. Samurott cannot be hit by crits because of shell armor. And I think you can take advantage of that and crit it back. Now, looking at all these Mons, they're all slower than Inteleon, so you can't really bother outspeeding it. You can invest, but then you have to take out of either HP or special defense, which is not good for a lot of these mons. Samurott is the one exception though. Focus energy to get a boost on a critical hit. Smart strike will always hit. And Razor Shell is good because it has a 50% chance of lowering the target's defense by one. These moves are really good because if it's a damaging move with a secondary effect to lower stat, it's going to happen even when the shields are up. Berserker here has Screech, but that can't work when the shields are up because it's not an attacking move. Razor Shell can. So you can stack the defense drops with Razor Shell, and you can hit hard with Smart Strike. Swords Dance to just overall boost the attack, uh, but I think getting your focus energy up will be more important than getting the swords dance at first so when looking at this you could go tear steel or you could just keep it at a tear water the reason why i go tear steel is because you get a boost on smart strike and then you also start resisting the ice moves a little better shell bell is your recovery here uh shell bell i really like shell bell i put shell bell on almost all of my raid builds so you really don't need anything other than that because if we look here and I highlighted the damage of the moves I think we're going to see in green uh, here, Samurott at a max special defense doesn't take a lot of damage from anything. The most you're going to see is these moves like Giga Impact, Hydro Cannon, and Hyper Beam, but I don't think we're going to see those. I really don't. So I'm not too worried about them. Shadow Ball is iffy. Shadow Ball could switch in with Dark Pulse. I think Dark Pulse is a little more fitting. Maybe because it's a spy Shadow Ball. But Shadow Ball and Dark Pulse on, an, on Samurott do the same amount of damage. Which is going to be the highest one at like 20 to 23%. Something you could easily heal off with the Shell Bell damage. Here, it doesn't take a lot of hits. None of them are going to be three hit KOs because you can't crit uh, Samurott. So you could actually take a little away from the special defense and invest more into the attack. But I think with focus energy and sword stance, you really don't need to do that. If we look here, we can see smart strike is misspelled, but whatever. Um, regular damage is going to be between 300 and 370 uh with terra if you go to the terra steel it's going to bump up between 474 and 558 i feel so weird just saying these numbers i feel like they're really not important i just want to show how they how they are and then if the snow's up and this is snow without terra snow without terra smart strike goes down to 2 
12 to 250. So you can see that like the snow being up is a big deal for Inteleon and it's going to slow you down. So we'll talk about that with Berserker. Razor Shell, you don't get a Terra boost with it because we are going the Terra Steel. If you want to go the Terra Water, I feel like the Terra Water could work as well. But Razor Shell is going to do 253 to almost 300. and But with Snow up, that goes down to 169 to 201. So I think Samurott is going to be your solid mon. You bring it when you're joining random raids. And I think Samurott is going to be the best just overall attacker. Are you going to be able to solo it? Probably not in the, in the time that you need, but it's possible. I think Samurott is the one you bring to random online raids. Next up is Berserker. Now, Berserker also has battle armor, uh, which is just another version of shell armor. Cannot be hit by crits. And Berserker is going to be your support and just like attacker. Once again, we have a maxed out physical, a, a maxed out HP and a maxed out uh, special defense. And I believe on the calcs, I went careful. So yeah, you want to be a plus special defense nature because it doesn't resist the water moves as well as Samurott because it is just a steel type, which is why, like I said, like maybe Samurott would be fine being a Terra Water but I think Berserker could go Terra Steel just to resist those ice moves. And Berserker could have an easier time because of Sunny Day. Berserker does have access to Sunny Day. I think getting Sun Up is going to be really good because one, you take that defense boost away from Inteleon. So your physical attackers are going to be able to do more consistent damage if Snow is not up too. When Snow is up, Blizzard is 100% accurate. The more blizzards it lands, the higher chance of you getting frozen. You don't want that. That's It's so annoying in a raid to get frozen. It's annoying any time to get frozen. So Sunny Day is going to prevent that. Sunny Day also has a second thing, which is going to weaken its water type moves. So when the sun's up, blizzard's going to be less accurate. Water moves are going to be less dangerous. So this is going to help your team all around, unless they're also bringing a... A, a water mon but you have smart strike with samurai so you can you can still pair it well with berserker you have the screech to lower the target's defense but that will not work if the shields are up but you have iron head and then i thought because berserker is so slow maybe a metal burst so if you get hit by attack you return it with a 1.5 damage i don't i don't know We'll, we'll have to test it. I've never used Metal Burst. We'll have to see how it goes. But if we look at the calcs for Berserker, there are some bolded prints here. Uh, Hydro Pump can do 44 to 53%. Uh, Snipe Shot can be a uh, almost a two hit, but not exactly a two hit. So you can get that Shell Bell recovery, a Shell Bell on everything with some Iron Head damage. Surf can do a whole lot, going almost to 50%. Hydro Cannon is definitely easily a two-shot, but like I said, I don't think we're going to see Hydro Cannon because it is a recharge move. So Blizzard does about 20% because of the steel typing. Air Cutter and Air Slash do very little because of the steel typing. Really, the only thing you have to worry about is Dark Pulse and Shadow Ball doing about 25%. It's uh, it won't be a four hit KO after shell bell recovery as long as you get off a iron head in, in that time. And then snipe shot being a three hit, probably a four hit with shell, with shell bell recovery off of iron head. Looking at iron head, you can't do the metal burst damage. So there is the regular damage turn one damage, which is 270 to 318. The terror damage is going to bump it up to 360 to uh, 424 and then the snow damage is going to be 180 to 212 so once again berserker is there to get the sun up and then start supporting with screech or iron head and just just chip away because once you get the sun up the snipe shot the hydro pumps that you're worried about with inteleon 
are going to be doing substantially less uh, against Berserker. So Berserker is probably going to be the Mon that you want to bring next to Samurott to get the sun up and support Samurott. Especially with those screeches, you can use that and Razor Shell to stack defense drops. So I think Berserker is a solid bring. If you have to choose one, though, I think you would go Samurott. If you have a friend that is going to bring a Samurott or bring a attacking Mon, a physical attacking Mon, you know, you could bring Berserker to support. I think it's always good to have a Pokemon with some support capabilities, especially if you're playing online with random people because um, most people just, they want to be the stars of the show. They want to be the, the, the main attacker. So every raid needs a supporter. Be that supporter if no one's going to be. It's, it's, it's just like a, like a Overwatch type game. Every team needs a healer. <laughs> if no one's being the healer, you, you might have to take one. Next up is Coyster. So Coyster also has the shell armor ability, so it can't be hit by crits. It has really good typing with the water and ice, so it's going to resist a lot of the moves right off the bat that Inteleon has. At first, I said you could either do, you know, the White Herb Shell Smash or Assault Vest. I looked at it from the lens of the white herb shell smash and i still don't think it's good i don't think coyster is going to be a good bring at all because one if you have shell armor you're not getting that skill link so the rock blast that you want to hit inteleon with it's not going to be consistent five hits so i don't know let's let's look at the spreads here for coyster i did the white herb Terra Water, uh, Careful Nature with max HP, max special defense. This is kind of how I went with all of the Mons because Inteleon's special attack is just so high. You could bring a fast Snarl Mon, but I don't know. There's really, I didn't look, but there's really no Mons like this that, that can get Snarl. So if you go the Shell Smash, Smart Strike, Ricklet, liquidation and rock blast um the reason you could go liquidation or razor shell liquidation has a higher base power and it is 100 accurate where razor shell has a lower damage and a lower accuracy at 95 but it has a higher chance to lower the defense liquidation only has a 20 percent the only thing i don't like about the shell smash strategy is if Inteleon clears your party stats. If your Cloyster gets knocked out, when it comes back on the field, it doesn't have that White Herb anymore. So you can only Shell Smash once and you have to make the best of it. If you're not making the best of it, it's, it's not going to do a lot. If we look here, Smart Strike is... Oh, I even calc Razor Shell. So I calced Razor Shell instead of Liquidation. Razor Shell is the lower one. So I think this just shows that like the damage with Smart Strike from Coyster is uh, 138 to 164. If the snow's up, it goes down to max 110. Uh, Razor Shell is max 132. If the snow is up, it's 88. Um, now Rock Blast... It is 50 to 60, and that is per hit. So if you hit three times, which is the average, I believe, you are doing between 150 to 180 damage. Still not a lot, and it's not consistent. So when we look here, you can really see how Coyster's special defense hurts it, which is why, like, if you don't want to try the the white herb shell smash, which I honestly don't recommend, but I just wanted to calc it to prove it. Um, it still takes a lot from hydro pump, which is a neutral damage. Resist it. Air slash. It takes a lot. The dark pulse and shadow ball. It takes 30 to 34%. Surf. It takes a lot. The hydro cannon and the hyper beam. Like I said, I don't think we're going to see those. 
but it's taking a lot of damage from snipe shot, 25% damage. The reason why I bring this up and the reason why I highlight it such lower damage ranges for Koyster is that Koyster doesn't have its own form of recovery. Now with Samurott and Berserker, you have the Shell Bell, so you can take higher hits because you're dealing damage and getting recovery back from that, supporting yourself. Koyster does not have that, so Koyster has to get healed by a cheer or a teammate, and if you're not getting healed, you know, taking a 30% damage on one hit is a lot, and that's with no crits involved. So I don't, I, I don't, I don't recommend Koyster. Maybe if you assault vest it, but still you don't have any form of recovery with an assault vest. So Koyster is kind of a, mm. next up, we're going to talk about Torkoal. Ignore the two on each side of Torkoal. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but Torkoal is here for getting the sun up. Of course you have the shell armor, so you don't have to take crits, but Getting the sun is super important for Torkoal. Now, the thing is... Now, the thing is, Torkoal is slow. Torkoal is very slow. Torkoal has some bulk. Torkoal is very slow. You are not getting a sunny day off with Torkoal before getting hit with a move. And that's where the problems come in for Torkoal. So here I have, because you don't get crit, I have damage and then damage with sun. Snipe shot is doing 70, could do up to 72%. With the sun up, it is easily a three hit KO. Uh, so that's still like meh. With hydro pump, hydro pump could be a potential one shot, almost a one shot. But even with the sun, you're losing 50% health. Now, if you get the sun up, and you start clicking flamethrower, you could do a lot of damage and shell bell could really help you out. Our leftovers, I would say leftovers just because there's going to be times where you don't click moves. Um, but I think if you, if you get a mon that automatically said sun, that's not Torkoal. Torkoal could be good, but without sun, Torkoal is terrible. Now, the one good thing about Torkoal is that it does have clear smog. So that is a possibility to bring. I would have to say, this is my set from last night. I did all the calcs on my other computer. I would say go clear smog over yawn because most of the time the sleep really doesn't do much because it can still attack half the time. Uh, so clear smog can reset its stats. So if it does do an agility or a double team, you could clear smog it. But other than that, uh, you know, the shell armor isn't worth it. It's really not. But next up, that's all my battle armor and shell armor Pokemon that I kind of talked about last in, in the previous video about Inteleon. But with Samurott, what people did is they brought Fire Tauros. Now, Fire Tauros has a super effective hit against... Uh, a bug type Samurott. And so you use, you use anger point to get to max attack. You want to take a crit with the Tauros. This is more, this is iffier with Inteleon because it only has two moves that it can crit you hit with. Now, granted, if you bring Tauros with it being a fighting type, the AI is going to use that flying type move that we think is probably going to be air cutter which has a high crit ratio. So that does increase your chances of being crit. But when we look at its moves, Raging Bull, Rock Tomb, and Close Combat, they're all pretty good moves, but its main move, Raging Bull, is, you know, neutral against Inteleon. Even at a plus six, it's neutral, and you want to do as much damage as possible. But there is Rock Tomb, which is super effective and can be supportive by lowering the speed. And... Close combat is, eh, I don't really recommend close combat because it lowers your defenses. You know, it's going to be harder to stick around on the field if you're constantly dropping your spe your defenses and your special defenses. That's kind of like the golden rule of any raids. You don't click recoil moves 
and you don't click moves that lower your stats because you're just hurting yourself in the long run. If we look at Aquatorus right here, we can see it's two moves that I think that have the chance to crit is Snipe Shot and Air Cutter. Now, Snipe Shot, we take decently well at a crit at 35 to 42%. If you get crit, you're gonna take you're gonna take a big hit, especially with air cutter at 55 to 65 ish. But after that, you get to plus six, so the shell bell is going to make up for any crits you get there. But it still has a decent range of moves. Air slash, for example, if it does crit, which it has a it has a lower crit chance, but even non crit, it consistently almost does 50 percent to to max. Attack, max special defense, Adamant Tauros. You could go careful, but I don't think it's going to change the calcs that much. Acrobatics does a lot if it crits. Um, Hyper Beam, I don't think we're going to see Hyper Beam. Blizzard, it takes well being the fighting type. It takes Ice Beam well. Being a fighting type, it takes Dark Pulse well. It takes Shadow Ball, not as well, but decent. It, it could take a lot of hits, but you have to get crit. And then you can start doing damage. So here I have the three moves. And this is the normal damage of the damage that you would get on turn one. This is the damage it would be in snow. Once again, you want a Pokemon that's going to get rid of that snow. Whether you're setting rain or setting sun. I say sun because you're weakening the water type attacks. Raging Bull, if you go Terra Water, you're going to get a Terra Boost off of that. And this is the damage range if you get to plus six. So close combat being a great chunk of damage, Rock Tomb being decently well for a non-stab, and Raging Bull. But here's the thing. If you get the sun up, Raging Bull is still going to do less, even at plus six. So if the sun is up and you have your plus six, Rock Tomb is actually your best move. And that's going to lower Inteleon's speed, and that's going to give your teammates a chance to hit before Inteleon as well, which is really good. But... I thought to myself, you know, against Samurai, people use the Tauros. The Aqua Tauros could work, but I wanted to look to see uh, what Anger Point Pokemon could do better. And I found one. And I think this is going to be the sauce. The crab. The crab. Hear me out. So, you can go Assault Vest with Crab Abominal because you have a super effective stab boosted Drain Punch, that is going to give you 50% recovery. You have Iron Head for super effective moves. The Terra, I would have to say, you know, go Terra Steel. Our, I, I would have to say Terra Ice. Terra Ice is probably going to be the best one, even though you don't have an Ice type move to take advantage of it. Uh, Rock Tomb, once again, lowering the speed by one. Uh, Rock Smash, giving a 50% chance to lower the target's defense basically on there the same reason why we have razor shell on samurai you can really stack up those defense drops with these physical attacking mons so we don't want hyper cutter we want anger point so anger point max hp max attack special defense and i believe i went careful adamant i went adamant you can go adamant because of the assault vest that's bringing the attack to 331. That's bringing the special defense. Let's see. That'd be like one, an extra one. I'm doing math in my head. One. 16. About 116. So about 360, 350 ish uh, special defense, max HP at almost 400. And then the drain punch for recovery, you can support yourself. And I think that if any Mon can solo, then Teleon raids, I think it could be Anchor Point Crab Omidal. So hear me out. Here's our two critting moves. Snipe Shot and Air Cutter. Air Cutter is super effective because of the fighting type, but it's resisted because of the ice type. So it takes actually takes the air cutter better than snipe shot which is you know neutral damage but if you get hit with a snipe shot and it crits 
you, it's going to do 45 to 53, 52%. If you get hit with the air cutter, it's going to do a third to almost 40%. That doesn't matter though, because you're going to be getting that recovery off a drain punch. So here, these don't have high crit chances, but I put them in just in case. Hydro Cannon does have the potential to one-shot with Hydro Cannon, like, non-crit. It still does, like, 40%. The Blizzard, it takes Blizzard well. It takes Dark Pulse well while it has the Dark Typing. It takes Shadow Ball decently. It takes the Air Moves recently. Air Slash, it takes less. That is wrong. That is wrong. Where did that come from? Oh, well, you, it's, it's probably going to be about, about 18 to 20%, 18 to 20% on air cutter, non-flinching. It's, it's taking these moves decently well, you know, about 20 to 23% on snipe shot that doesn't crit. But if you get the crit, you are at plus six. So you have drain punch, drain punch does 320 to 380 damage, you get that 50% in recovery. So you're going to be getting almost 50% of your health back every single hit. Unless it drops your attack somehow, you're going to get almost 50% recovery every single hit. Iron Head does a decent 228 to 270. Rock Tomb, we want it to lower the speed but it goes up to 204 and rock smash does the same thing and can drop the defense. So you could, if you have a lot of HP and you feel more comfortable not clicking drain punch, you could go for the rock smash. You can go for the rock tomb. I would have to say rock smash to drop the defense in the snow. You know, it's, it's doing less, but you also take advantage of the snow, but Inteleon probably isn't hitting you with, physical moves so Inteleon benefits from the snow more than you do once again just get sun up none of these moves are affected by the sun so just have a pokemon to get the sun up now at plus six drain punch is doing 1284 to 1512 and remember you get 50 percent back as recovery so you could heal yourself almost twice on the drain punch recovery iron head hitting a thousand rock tomb and rock smash hitting anywhere between 680 to 800 to put this in perspective like this is the plus six drain punch and that is inteleon that would be inteleon's health if multiplied by 35 which i believe samurott was and decidui was 30 so it could be anywhere between the times 30 to times 35. I did the times 35 just in case. You are doing good damage with Drain Punch. You're getting recovery. If they activate Anger Point on Crabomital, Crabomital is set. You just keep clicking Drain Punch. You get your recovery. And that's it. That's it. That's why I think that Crabomital could be the one to solo it. The one thing you do have to worry about though is moves like Dark Pulse, Waterfall, and Air Slash. High high flinch chances. You know, you don't want to take this much damage if you're not getting the Drain Punch recovery. So a flinch could be scary here. But other than that, I think Crab Bombadil is going to be the one. But just a quick review. I think we are going to see Blizzard, Snipe Shot, Dark Pulse, Air Slash, or Air Cutter. Uh, snowscape m agility maybe double team for sure we see the snowscape 100 percent. but that's gonna be all what do you guys think if you guys want to use this sheet to test out your own mon calc wise to see how it goes uh there will be a link to this in the comments down below you will have to make a copy of it but there will be a link to this at below and you can also look at my sets and the stats for them so you can pick the one that's right for you if you want to do it and please 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 if i'm streaming 
come with a with an actual mon that was picked out by someone, whether it be uh W D Michael, whether it be Pokemon Cast, whether it be one of these mons. I don't mind <laughs> having have like you not using my builds. That's fine. You don't have to use my builds. I would prefer you to use someone's build, someone that planned this out, someone that figured it out. There are the one shot strategies, but here's the thing like Annihilate with Typhlosion. I think it was Annihilate with Typhlosion. Yeah, the last one was Typhlosion. Uh, with the Annihilate with Typhlosion, just, you know. Yeah, the one shot builds, like the, the solo builds are more for soloing. So if you have a solo build, don't don't bring it to the thing. Except for Crabomital. I feel like Crabomital could hold its own. I feel like it's gonna need the time, but I feel like Crabomital could hold its own in a group. But I would suggest you go Samurott if you want to be the damage dealer, Berserker if you want to be the support. If you are probably going to solo, I would try the Crabominal. The other ones, I'm not too certain about. I, I don't put my stamp on approval on Quaster or Torkoal. That's that's all I'm saying. Don't, don't pick those ones. But that's going to be all. Let me know what you are running in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed this content, do not forget to like and subscribe. And Thursday night, I will definitely be streaming some Inteleon raids if you want to join in. Join the Discord in the description down below, and I'll see you then. Till next time, I'm Zach. We'll see everyone later.